You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you into the Let's Play episode of Heroes Admin, and with a great announcement. We hit over 1,800 subs! Oh my god, we are so close to 2,000 guys! If you can, get the word out get the word out to people about my channel. If you don't know any furries who love visual novels, then bring them here. Bring them here! I could, I could use uh, extra subs. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back in. We had just gone to the college, and uh, we had just... Uh, I just wanted to go back and... Uh, uh, see what what would happen if you would hit do Max's usuals for his food. But anyway, guys, let's jump right in. All right, <clears throat> Max's usuals. Um, I'll have Max's usuals, please. All right, one buffalo steak coming right up. And with that, Cody left the bar. Heh, I knew you had good taste, Cassian. Max gave you another shoulder pat as he grinned. Cody makes the best steak around these parts, so don't worry, you won't regret it. I hey, guess I'll take your word for it. From the counter, you could vaguely see Cody preparing the meal in the kitchen area further in. Even from what little you've glimpsed, you could tell the bear was not messing around when he called himself the head chef. The sizzling in the kitchen clashed with the hectic ambience of the tavern, and soon enough the enticing aroma of a delicious meal permeated the bar. Cody returned with the dish after a few minutes, and your mouth was already watering from anticipation. Here you go! The bear placed a plate before you when you heard more hollering from one of the crowds on the other side. Uh, excuse me, it looks like I have some other patrons to tend to. I'll be right back. Enjoy your meal. It smells delicious. You licked your lips at the thought. The dish turned out to be strikingly similar to a normal beef steak, only bigger and chunkier. You took another whiff just for, re just for reference. It smelled quite the same, too. Were it served with some mashed potatoes and sautéed vegetables, you would be very convinced that this was just a regular steak. You grabbed a knife, and much to your surprise, the steak was quite tender, seeing how the knife went through it like butter. Oh, man. They get me hungry. I just ate. It was cooked to perfect to perfect medium rare, as advertised, too. You took a moment to admire the cut, your keen nose picking up the delicious smell of roasted garlic, herbs, and butter, all of which made you salivate even more. Yep, now you see why this is my usuals. Max nodded at you knowingly. Well, what are you waiting for? Dig in before it gets cold. With a nod, you decided to take a bite. It's amazing! You hardly had to chew at all as the meat melted against your tongue. The initial taste was quite gamey, but the combination of spices Cody used somehow turned the flavor into a delicious, savory one instead. Among the richness of the steak and the butter was a hint of sweetness, spiciness, and citrusy aftertaste. Whew, could this be a sauce? Your eyes widened from excitement as the entire range of different flavors came to you all at once. They clashed and yet meshed together almost in harmony. It's so good you had to stop yourself from tearing up too much. You tried to savor every last bit of the meal, but before you could, but before you knew it, your plate was already empty, like someone else just snagged the juicy steak away from you. Whoa, whoa, slow down there, Cassian. Max chuckled as he tried to lick the plate clean after slurping down the sauce. I, I can't help it, it's so freaking delicious! You went on until you were convinced the plate was squeaky clean. Done! As you put your plate down, you realized Cody had been eyeing you this whole time. The bear winked at you before tending to the customers, and you felt your face getting a little red. Nah. <laughs> You chatted with Max for a little while until Cody finally returned. Welcome back, Max said, lifting his probably empty mug to greet the bear. <laughs> well, how did you enjoy the meal, Cassian? It was great. I love it. No kidding. I haven't seen anyone downing the whole dish so fast in a while now. Oh yeah, Cody. You saw Max tossing a coin from his pouch to which the bear caught it almost perfectly. For Cassian's dinner. Gotcha. Thanks, Max. You noticed it was a gold coin, so that must have been quite expensive. And sorry for not keeping you company, boys. Things really got a bit hectic since one of the waiters left. Cody sat down by the counter to catch his breath. What about your other waiter? No, he's taking the day off. Said he had important events to attend to. The bear sighed. I could really use an extra hand around here. Cody then looked to you. Hey, maybe you can help me. Maybe you can help me in between your training, Cassian. What do you say? Hmm. I don't know, Cody. There's a lot for him to catch on in order to become a proper mercenary. But it's totally up to you, Cassian. We can still train once in a while, even if you decided to help our chef here. Well, I guess I'll give it some thoughts later. I gotta go now, though. Oh? Where are you going? I think I'll walk around a bit. Maybe go to the tower. Ah, then you might want to give Alex's lab a visit. It's at the Magic, it's at the magic Crystal Research Center on the 25th basement floor. Who knows if you might learn a thing or two there. Hopefully I will.
Well, I'd better get going. Thanks again for the food, Cody. You wave them goodbye as you squeeze your way back out of the tavern. Hmm. To the tower. All right. Ooh, nice. You quickly made your way through the back entrance of the main building. Under the street lamps, the grand archway of the tower soon came to view. On the way to the lobby, you noticed two lab people standing by the bulletin board outside. You decided to call the elevator right away. The guest lounge was rather empty aside from a few people in lab coats resting by the couches in silence. The elevator arrived almost right away. You pressed the B25 button and the lift descended. You can see from the side panel the tower had 40 floors above and 25 below ground. You quite wondered how you, you quite wondered how people could stay and work so deep underground. This felt like a long ride, but before you knew it, the elevator came to a halt with a loud ding. You have arrived on floor B25, Magic Crystal Research Center. A female said, oh, okay, let me... Damn, how do I go back? Okay, back. You have arrived on floor B25, Magic Crystal Research Center. A female synthetic voice spoke from the side panel as you stepped out. Oh, Jesus. Hello, Umbrella. <laughs> you looked around a bit. You're at the main hall, judging by the small sign next to the elevator. Before you were before you were several before you were several stools and chairs lined along the wall, and in the corner was what looked like a vending machine, though you can't see any snacks or drinks anywhere. To the right was a metallic door, which didn't seem to have a handle. Next it was a security panel with a keyboard and what you assume was one of those eye scanners. Whoa, that seems pretty futuristic. I probably should not be messing with it though. You decided to leave the door be and headed along the hall instead. So far this underground hallway looked quite like the one in the dormitory, only much less colorful and lively. The only thing that stood out among the white walls are the same metallic doors and small air vents near the ground and on the ceiling. It's pretty quiet down here. You thought of knocking on one of the doors when you heard a familiar vo when you heard familiar voices coming from the end of the corridor. If memory served you well, it was definitely Alex and Ray. They seemed to be shouting or arguing about something. You decided to stay close to the door and listen. Alright, what voice? S slow down, Rye! Hey, here, here. Let me help you get in. It's quite a big boy, after all. He probably needs a lot more l Whoa! <laughs> All right, then, Ray said with a hint of a tease. <laughs> no, no, it's too much. It's not going to work. Shh, relax. You just hold it right there, and I'll shove it back in, okay? F fine, this better be worth it. It'll fit, trust me. All right, ready? One, two, and three. <clears throat> you can vaguely hear sloppy noises, followed by a much more audible... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> You couldn't picture anything else they could possibly be doing. Have you come at the wrong time? Ah, there we go. See, it goes ju it goes just right in where it belongs. Ray chuckled, and you could hear the links grumbling. Just shut up and hold the sound of the side for me. I got you. Don't worry now. Now, I'm going to start moving. If it's too much, just yell so I can be gentle, all right? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I really wonder what the hell these two are doing. Oh, my God. Shush! Just keep it steady. You held your breath as the two went silent again, and only you could, the only thing you could hear was the same wet, sloppy noises. Your face was already a beat red as you tried to contain your thoughts. Should you not? Maybe they're just doing a normal experiment. Maybe it's not what you think it is. Ka! The curiosity is driving you crazy. You pressed your ears against the door, hoping to hear something else other than the questionable sounds. But for some reason, the metallic surface you expected wasn't there, and you fell the and you fell into the lab. Ka! Huh? What was that? Ah. <laughs> oh, did I forget to lock the door? Cassian, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to disturb you guys. You, beca you became a muttering mess as the dragon approached. I I'll leave right away. Huh, <laughs> you okay, Cassian? Calm down. We're just working on this magic piston for a while. Ray pointed to the workbench in the middle of the room, where Alex was holding a contraption shaped like a piston. As more translucent oil got poured into the main tube, the piston seemed to operate on its own, making the same sloppy noises you heard. Oh, so that's what it was, you muttered to yourself as you stood back up. Who is it, Rye? Alex said, still tinkering with the device. It's Cassian. Cassian who? The lynx looked up from the desk and thought for a moment. Ah, the sacrificial lamb, of course. What are you doing here? Well, Max told me to pay you, pay you guys a visit. Maybe I could learn a thing or two by helping around. <laughs> yeah, right. As if I even have time to kill. The Lynx worked on the device a little bit before finally re before finally looking up to you. Looking up at you. Listen, I'm a very busy man. Unless it's something very urgent, you'd better leave. Ha, <laughs> don't be so harsh on him, Alex. 
Why don't you come on in and have a seat, Cassian? Hey, hey, hey! I hold it there, Rye. What did I say about bringing other people to my private space? Well, Jesus Christ, they're bulges. My God. Okay, I apologize to him. I'm sorry, Alex. I'll leave you be if that's what you want. Oh, trust me, that would be a wonderful. That would be wonderful right now. Okay. He turned around to leave the lab when Ray raised his voice. Ah, oh, come on, Alex. You're just being mean again. This is probably the first time you've seen him this frustrated. Are you seriously just gonna lock yourself in the lab? When was the last time you even left the tower? Hmm. And just look at this place. The dragon gestured around the lab, from the tools and equipment messily scattered around the place to many sheets of paper and photos pinned against the walls of the whiteboards. There's just nothing to work. There's just nothing but work and work and work. I would probably go insane on my own, and you would too without me around. Don't be so dramatic, Rye. They're still my official assistant. Oh yeah, him. Festin, right? Could you seriously call him your lab assistant? When the only thing he does is making coffee and doing paperwork at the guest lounge for you? Hmm. You somewhat expected the Lynx to make a snarky retort, but instead he just remained silent. Or did you send him off again, as always? You gotta stop pushing others away like that, Alex. They just want to be helpful. Look, Rye, even if you know I don't want to, even you know I don't want to talk about it. Fine. But go easy on Cassian, will ya? A new face around here could really freshen things up for a change. Besides, you could teach him several things about magic. He's the prophesized hero, after all. Wait. Prophesized hero? Really? Alex eyed you up and down again. So, he's from another world. Well, at least that's what, that's what Max told me. His lady friend found Cassian here in the forest with traces of dimensional magic found all over his body. How curious. You could see the brief glint in Alex's eyes, and you felt a little concerned. Hmm. Well then, I suppose you can stay around and help. Do tell me more about this homeworld of yours, if you will. Well, thank you, Alex. I'll be sure to pull my weight around here. As you should. And while we're at it, you could also help me run some errands for Alex as well. I could use some company. It gets lonely pretty quickly out in the field, and I could use a body warmer on a cold night out. Ray gave you a shoulder pat and a wink. S sure, Ray. I'll see what I can do. Well, I will let you know if I require your assistance, but I suggest that you go for now. I'm still working on an important project, and I can't concentrate with too much interference, if you will. Got it. We'll see you later then. We'll see you guys later then. You waved them goodbye as you left the lab. Only Ray returned to the gesture, however, as Alex gave you a dismissive wave instead as he returned his attention to the contraption at his station. You took the elevator back to the ground floor and left the tower. Oh, okay. You ended up wandering the dormitory halls for a while. At the end of each floor was a small balcony. You leaned against the railings, admiring the view ahead of you. Stars and constellations of various shapes and sizes dotted the vast night sky. It was simply breathtaking. Perhaps this world did not suffer from light pollution, at least not yet. You were enjoying the calming night ambience when you heard some... Why is this, uh, okay? When you heard some people talking on the balcony above. You stayed there for a moment longer before going back to your room. Hmm. After changing into your undergarments and going through your nightly routines, you threw yourself against the bed. I didn't click on that, because it may have, it may have taken me out of the window. And I've got HDR enabled on my system, and that probably would have messed the color up. Anyway. Hmm. Oh. Time flies when you're snooping. <laughs> you sighed to yourself. The prospect of being a hero and the super and supposed savior of this land was still a lot to take in, and an even bigger responsibility that you had to bear. Though for what it's worth, you felt like you could be ready for whatever challenges lie ahead, but not, after, not until after a good night's rest. You eventually dozed off after letting your mind wander back to the events throughout the day. <laughs> oh my. Oh my. Beep, 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 beep. Ah! The clock alarm slowly pulled you from your sleep as you stuffed your head beneath the pillow. Just five more minutes, Alyssa, I promise. Uh, Alyssa, all right, I'm at my dorm now. Beep, 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 beep. You gradually forced your eyes open and took a look at the nightstand where the clock read 5 a.m. Oh my god. 5 a.m., fuck me. Uh, all right, all right, I'm up now. You stumbled towards the bathroom after switching off the alarm. You washed up for a bit before sitting back at your bed. <sighs> oh, that's your stomach. You already felt quite hungry. You wandered out to the, you wandered to the pantry and looked around for a bit. Unfortunately, there was nothing in the shelves and the cupboards, and the search only made your stomach growl louder. 
You sighed to yourself. To think that you were getting to think you were getting used to being woken up every morning with meals ready at the table. This place might look like a hotel, but it's still just a dorm after all. No breakfast in bed and all you can eat buffets waiting for you outside your dorm. You do remember that you can get food at the, at the honeysuckle, so you decided to change into your usual outfit and headed there for now. The place was not as rowdy as last evening, and certainly a lot tidier too. You could already see the waiter taking orders from a bunch of hungry mercenaries, while Cody himself was going back and forth between the kitchen and the back rooms. He's already so busy at this hour. It was about 5.30 when you got there, and you wondered if Cody even had enough sleep with such an early opening time. You decided to sit down at the same bar when Cody happened to pass by. Ha <laughs> ha, Cassian! Good morning! Good, good morning, Cody. You promptly greeted the bear. Judging by his apron and kitchen gloves, he must still be in the middle of something. <laughs> I take it here for the free meal, yes? You nodded as the bear took some jars from the nearby shelves. Do wait for a bit. I'll get to you in a moment. With that, he headed back to the kitchen. After a few minutes, he returned with a bowl and a small plate of sliced fruits. Here you go. You said this should set you right up for the morning. Thanks, Cody. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I still got a bit of work to do. We can chat at later, hour, later hours, perhaps. Before you could say much, he already left the bar to attend the other patrons who just arrived. Hmm. He looked at the bowl, which turned out to be oat cereal with milk. You can't help feeling taken aback. This is such a far cry from the delicious meal you had last time. But beggars can't be choosers, as they say. You finished up the meal after a moment, already thinking of ordering some actual food next time around. But that would probably cost a lot. Looks like you really do have to pull your weight around here before you could afford fancy things like that. You might, you might give that matter more thoughts, but that's neither here nor there. He briefly wondered what you should start to do for the day. You could catch up with Max for a start. Maybe visiting Alex's lab again or accompanying Ray on his errands. You could also help Cody around the tavern. Seems like you've got some options after all. Hey guys, I think I'm the first run I'm going to do is Max. So who should it be? I'll go with Max. I guess I'll stick with Max for now. Oh, hold up. Oh. There we go. That'd be my safe spot. Okay, Max. Guess I'll stick with Max for now. He could show me the ropes to become a proper hero and mercenary after all. Who knows, if I could even get some riches out of it. Wishful thinking. <laughs> you decided to leave the tavern and look for Max when you noticed that he was also there all along. The Malamute was seated at one of the tables in the back, still munching on his hefty sandwich. Hey, Max! Oh, morning, Cassian. Max smiled as he finished up his food. You're up early. Had breakfast yet? Hmm, yeah, I have. It was pretty okay. Heh. <laughs> I know the free food here is pretty, well, humble compared to what we have at Alyssa's, but it does the job just about right. And you know that you know the drill you'll have to spend more if you want to dine like a king. I know, Max, I know. Maybe I'll treat you sometime, ni sometime some to something nice once I get some money for myself. Huh, I appreciate the gesture, but you've just arrived here, Cassian. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, what are we doing for today? Training? Slaying monsters and solving crime? Hmm, I actually have patrol duty today. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to show you the basics and do some warm-up exercise. Can't chase down bad guys with a stiff body, eh? Come along. Ooh, pretty. Yep. You followed Max outside the tavern into an open field. The air is still quite cold as the sun was barely out. You took a moment to bask in the sunlight as the scent of the morning dew really freshened you up. Max immediately stripped off his armor and began to exercise. Ooh, woo. Admire his body, fuck yeah. You just stood there for a moment and stared at his body. It's not like you haven't seen enough of it even back at Alyssa's, but getting to do that this up, this up close is quite something else. His supple, well-toned chest and the way his muscles bulged and stretched his precise movements was quite a sight to see. Mmm! Mmm! He made one last arm stretch before turning to you. Alright, you ready, Cassian? Uh-huh! Now, do as I say. First off, bend your knees. Then hands to your sides to form a stance. Like this? He muttered as you sluggishly followed his lead. Go a bit lower. Um, you huffed, bending your knees a bit more. Like this? That should do. Now, keep it steady and try punching forward like this. He got into the stance much quicker and threw a, fi threw a few forward hits with his fists. Uh, okay. Your legs are already feeling a little sore and your arms are very stiff as you tried to throw the punch. Your muscles got more and more tense with each move, up to the point where it felt like your limbs were burning. You forced a few more hits with a jolt when a jolt of pain dropped you to the ground. Da! Ah! You held your legs firmly as you rolled around a bit, feeling like something was yanking at your limbs from the inside. It's okay, Cassian, it's okay. Deep breaths. You felt Max rushing to your side as he urged you to remain still. Here, let me. Ow, ow, ow! He yelped and winced as he slowly straightened your legs. <clears throat> it was painful, but after calming yourself with some proper breathing, your tense muscles gradually relaxed, and eventually you breathed a sigh of relief as the pain subsided. You didn't stretch, did you? 
Max sat beside you as you shook your head. He looked a bit disappointed. Never forget to stretch before you do any sort of exercises. Same thing applies to your future training. Now, just sit here for a bit while I finish my warm-up session. With that, the Malmute left, left your side to resume his exercise on his own while you just sat there and mulled over what just happened. Heh. <laughs> After a while, you headed to the drinking fountain to wash up before returning to the lobby to catch up with Max. All good, Cassian? Yep, where are we headed next? To the city. I have certain matters to investigate. Investigate? What sort of matters? Hmm. Well, it's supposed to be classified, but I guess I could tell you more when we get there. You followed him as you left the guild on foot. Despite being considered part of the city, the guild building stood on its own estate, so there was still quite a bit of distance between the place and the actual city. You took a moment to survey the lush fields trailing along the main road as you went on. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Yep. Alright, Alarm Chan, thank you for your input. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Heroes Advent. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!